Methylglyoxal, Mg, a three-carbon cellular metabolite, can be produced within cells through a number of different reactions, depending upon the type of cell. For example, Mg is a minor side product of the normal catalytic events catalyzed by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Due to its chemical structure, that of a reactive dicarbonyl, intracellular buildup of Mg can be cytotoxic to cells and has been associated with a number of medical conditions. It can also be an important metabolite in the cellular biochemistry of microorganisms. The glyoxylase enzyme system catalyzes the conversion of toxic, metabolically produced alpha-ketoaldehydes, such as methylglyoxal, into their corresponding non-toxic 2-hydroxy carboxylic acids, such as D-lactate, in the case of Mg. Although not the sole enzymatic process that can handle Mg, the glyoxylase system is a critical one. The two-component glyoxylase system consists of the metalloenzymes glyoxylase 1, also known as GLO-1 or GLO-A, or GLX-1. The RS lactoglutathione methylglyoxalase isomerizing enzyme, which catalyzes a proton shift in the non enzymatically produced adduct of Mg and an intracellular thiol such as the tripeptide glutathione. The product of the glyoxase 1 enzyme is SD lactoglutathione, and depending on the cell, can, in its own right, be an important molecule in cellular biochemistry. The second enzyme, glyoxylase 2, GLO2, or also known as GLO-B, catalyzes the hydrolysis of this thioester to D-lactate and glutathione. Another glyoxylase enzyme has been identified, termed glyoxylase 3, and it appears to directly convert Mg into D-lactate. From a protein structure and function perspective, investigations of the glyoxylase enzymes have been a rich source of new fundamental knowledge concerning how certain metalloenzymes function, the effect of protein structure on metal selectivity and affinity, and the various ways in which nature can remodel proteins without affecting their overall biochemical function. The Escherichia coli glyoxase 1 enzyme, which is shown here, is homodimeric in quaternary structure and has two active sites. Each active site is composed of metal binding residues from both subunits. The metal environment is clearly octahedral in geometry, with two water or hydroxide molecules also interacting with the metal center. The E. coli enzyme is active with metal ions such as nickel plus 2, cobalt 2, manganese 2, and cadmium 2, and each of these metal ions produce a catalytically active enzyme having this octahedral metal geometry. Yet, the enzyme can also bind zinc plus 2 ion, the functioning metal in some other glyoxylase 1 enzymes, notably from humans and yeast, but the E. coli enzyme is inactive with this metal. The geometry around the zinc ion in the E. coli active site is close to trigonal bipyramidal in nature, which would appear to indicate that an octahedral arrangement is critical to its enzymatic activity. Additional studies have shown that there are many other glyoxylase 1 enzymes that share the metal activation profile seen for the E. coli enzyme. For example, the Yersinia pestis and the Neisseria meningitides enzymes as shown here and provide additional evidence to support the hypothesis that there are in fact two subclasses of glyoxase 1 enzyme in nature, one that is zinc activated and the other that is not activated by zinc ion but is maximally activated by nickel ion. Interestingly, the Pseudomonas originosa PA01 genome has been found to contain three different open reading frames which can code for three different glyoxase 1 enzymes. Investigations have shown that two of them are activated by nickel ion but not zinc and the other has properties that are like those of the human and yeast glyoxase 1 enzymes, that is, that they are active in the presence of zinc. To add even more interest to the investigations of the glyoxase enzyme system, the Clostridium acetobutylicum glyoxase 1, whose structure was determined by high-throughput structural genomic studies, produces a nickel-activated glyoxase 1 enzyme that has a completely different arrangement of its subunits, such that each of the two active sites is composed entirely of protein residues from the same subunit. This indicates that glyoxase 1 metal activation profiles can be maintained across glyoxase protein structural types. It is clear that there is a rich field of biochemistry in the enzyme structure and function of glyoxase proteins, combined with their structural similarity to a number of antibiotic binding or inactivating proteins, such as the bleomycin binding protein, the midomycin binding protein, and the phosphomycin inactivating enzymes. The additional investigation of the glyoxase enzymes appears exciting.